I spent my long Easter weekend in France, in Nice specifically, and for the four days and three nights that I was there, I spent a total of just under 250 euros. That is excluding my flight. I'm excluding the flight here because I mean, everyone's coming from a different area in the world, so the flights will be very different. But everything that I did spend in Nice and on that vacation, like accommodation, food, transportation, all of that was under 250 euros. So in this video, I thought I'd share with you a little bit about the trip and all money related issues. So I think this video is going to have two parts. The first part where I'll share exactly how much I spent in each of the categories. And then the second part where I'll share tips and tricks with you that you can also adopt for your future travel plans. Maybe you're planning a vacation in Europe. Maybe you'll live in Europe like I do and you're planning a weekend trip to a different city. So these will be some tips that anyone can apply to their traveling. In case you're new here, hi, my name is Rebecca. I love traveling. I live in Germany and I work in finance and accounting. And by the way, that's also the reason why I haven't posted for a few weeks. It's year end season for us and it's super busy. And this month I'm also doing a no spend month. And the trip to France was planned before I decided to do the no spend month. I decided to do the no spend month. So obviously I still went for it. I still went to Nice, but that's also the reason why I wanted to be super intentional with my money, save a lot of money, not spend on unnecessary things. So let's start straight away with the first part of the video where I'll share exactly how much I spent in total. So I do have my phone here. I have an app I like to use for my travel expenses. It's called Travi Pocket. I like to have that to keep the travel expenses separate from my everyday normal expenses. So the total amount that I have spent is 246 euros and 50 cents. So just under 250, as I said. And if we look at the statistics, you'll see that over 50% was for accommodation and then about 30% meals and the rest transportation, sightseeing and others. So for accommodation, that is the price that I paid for my Airbnb. And I did look at the price a little bit. There were pricier Airbnbs that were closer to the city center. But for me, it wasn't really necessary to be so close in the center of the city. So I only spent 127 euros for the three nights. Then for the food category, I spent a total of 78 euros which translates into 10 to 35 euros per day. It really depended on the day because for example, the first day where I spent 35 euros, I went for dinner at a restaurant and that was 22 euros. So it was a little bit pricier. And the third day, I actually didn't spend a lot of money because I brought my own lunch. I made some sandwiches and for the dinner, the family that I stayed at, at the Airbnb, they wanted to cook for me, which was very nice. I didn't expect that at all. They didn't need to do that, but they wanted to. So I saved a lot of money that day. And for the food, I actually made sure to snack a little bit here and there because France is known for like great crepes or great croissants. So I really wanted to get some pain chocolat, some crepes on the way. So I really did not deprive myself too much there. I had at least one snack a day, sometimes two or three. So that was a total of 78 euros. Next up was transportation, 18 euros only, which is super cheap if you take into account everything that I did there. So I had to go from the Airbnb to the city center, which was about a 30 minute bus ride. So that was each morning and then going back at night. And with Indies, I actually walked a lot, but for all the public transport that I used, I got this 10 trip ticket at the airport and I thought, let's see how far it gets me. It got me all the way until the end when I left Nice. So 10 trips, which translated into one euro per trip, super cheap. And then a day I wanted to go to Monaco for the day. It's only a 30, 40 minute train ride away. Not very far at all. I really wanted to go see it. So I went there. It cost two euro 50 with a bus, which is a little cheaper than if you take the train. And then on the way back, I stopped at a little mountain village, super cute, super picturesque mountain village. So that was another 220 to go there and then 150 to go back to Nice. For that entire day trip, I only spent six euros and 20 cents for the entire transportation. Then on another day, I went to a beach that was outside of Nice. So I had to get a different ticket for that. And it was two euros 10 to get there. And on the way back, I actually didn't pay anything because the machine was broken. There was nothing that I could get a ticket with. And it was only one stop on the train and that was it. So nobody really got a ticket. Yeah. So I only spent 18 euros in total on transportation, 
which is extremely cheap if you ask me. There are two more categories here. Um, one is like random category, 17 euros and 40 cents, and the other one is sightseeing. Let's start with the sightseeing. That one is for a luggage drop off. So the very first day I arrived, I arrived in the morning and I wasn't able to check into my Airbnb until later. So I went to a place where they store your luggage and this one cost six euros 20. And this way I was able to walk around the city with empty hands and not having to carry or drag my luggage around with me all the time. And then the other category, let's take a look. So I got a souvenir, oh yeah. I didn't really plan on buying anything because I'm on a no spend month, but the souvenir and the sticker um, are these two things that I bought because I really wanted to get some stickers for my suitcase. I have a suitcase where I have all the stickers of the places that I went to and I wanted to get these two to put on there. So that's why I spent money on them, but that's kind of the only thing that I actually bought there. And then gift, oh yeah, that was a little something for my nephews that I got. Then I also had to pay 50 cents for the toilet one time. That's a thing in Europe that you have to pay for a toilet. Not everywhere, but in many places in Germany, it's very common, so I wasn't surprised. And then I got the pain au chocolat. Oh yeah, that was the last day. I wanted to get some chocolate croissants to take home with me and then share with my roommates to have something from France. So that's kind of like a gift. That's why I put it in this category and not on the meal category. So that was everything I spent on my weekend trip in France, around 250 euros. And in case you're wondering, I spent around 89 euros on the flights. But as I said, that will really depend what airline you take, where you're flying out of, and whether you only travel with a carry-on or you wanna have a suitcase as well. So that it will be different for everyone. Let's move on to the second part of the video now and let's talk about how I saved money on that trip and how you can also save money on your next trip. First and foremost is public transportation. That's like the easiest way that you can save money. And I know it's not the case in every country, but in Europe especially, public transportation is a very easy, simple, safe, and very cheap form of transportation. I would argue that for all of Europe, you can get by with only public transportation. You don't need Ubers, you don't need taxis, which are much more expensive. And you also do not need to get your own rental car, especially if you're only going to take city trips or a day trip from the city somewhere else. Maybe if you do wanna do like a road trip through the entire country, okay, that's another story. But for most of these trips, you will not need to get a rental car. For me on this weekend in Nice, I did want to take a day trip to Monaco, which is not only a different city, but a different country, but very close by. And I managed to do everything by train and buses. There are so many that are going there. And in case you're wondering on how on earth you would know which bus or train to take, you have a phone and there's Google Maps. I always use Google Maps. It's just the easiest way to find out. You just put in where you wanna go, select the public transportation, and then it will tell you which train or bus to take, what the line number is or the bus number. It even tells you when it departs and sometimes also how much it will cost. So there's nothing easier than that. Next up, I saved a lot of money by choosing an Airbnb over a hotel. I already mentioned that in the first part, but let me give you some more advantages. So if you actually live with locals, with French people in my case, I got to experience the culture a little bit. I got to talk to them and practice my French. And they also gave me some local tips on which beach to go to. I had not planned on going to that beach before, but when they told me, I actually went and it was amazing. I did not regret it at all. And then also for going to Monaco, they actually recommended I take a bus instead of the train because the bus has the more scenic route. The bus took a road by the coast, by the sea, and it was very beautiful and I wouldn't have known it without them because Google Maps only showed me the fastest option, which was the train, and the bus took about 15 minutes longer. I also was very lucky because my Airbnb came with free breakfast, which is always a good option, but if you don't have free breakfast, that's an easy meal of the day that you can just head into the supermarket, get yourself some cereals, and then eat those before you head out into the city. Speaking of supermarkets, 
When I travel on a budget, I usually only eat one big meal a day out in a restaurant, for example, and then for the other meal, I either get something at a supermarket or I go to like a local kiosk or a bakery and get a sandwich or something, which is usually a lot cheaper than going into a restaurant. So that would always be like my second meal of the day. The next big point to save money is having in mind free ways on how to see and explore the city. And to be honest, getting a feel for the city is always free. It's completely free to stroll through city center, the old town, go to a park or go to spots with panoramic views. All of that is completely free and you will get a feel for the city and walking will get you almost anywhere. I walked everywhere in Nice. I walked the Promenade des Anglais, the walkway next to the beach, which was very beautiful. I walked through the entire old town. I walked up to a monastery, an old monastery with like hundreds of steps to go up there. It was totally worth it. I walked to see a cathedral. I walked to see the train stations. Almost everything is walkable, especially in the city center. On top of all that free sightseeing, of course, you can decide whether you want to go to a museum or go somewhere else that has an entrance fee. For me, I was considering going into the casino in Monaco, but it was almost 20 euros to just go inside. And the whole entrance area was free. I got to see all that. And then I thought, if I can't even play in the casino because it wouldn't open until later, there was not really point in spending the 20 euros in my opinion. So I decided against it and I didn't buy the ticket. And in the end, I actually did not pay any entrance fees to anything. On my past trips, I did go on some guided tours, for example, boat tours, because that's obviously something that you can do on your own. If you wanna explore a cave, like on an island somewhere that they go to on a boat, of course, that's something that I would book with an organization or a guided boat trip, something like that. And I've never regretted doing that. But for Nice, there wasn't really anything that I wanted to do that wasn't accessible with public transportation or on my own. Talking about guided tours, there are free walking tours in almost any city. Just Google it for the city you want to go see. And that is a great way if you want to walk around the city, but have someone explain you a little bit about the city and about the buildings that you're seeing. That is a great alternative. And it's, well, it's free, but it is recommended or common to give a little tip to the tour guide. So it's not completely free, but it's a very cheap way if you want to have someone explain you a little bit and some local to to tell you about the places that you're seeing. My last tip is for traveling for the airport days. Make sure to have a snack with you, especially if you have a long day ahead of you or if you're someone who likes to snack, then go to the supermarket beforehand, get a snack so you don't have to buy the expensive airport food and also always have a bottle with you, a water bottle that you can drink or you can um, pour out before going through security. And after security, you can always fill that up. There are either water fountains in the airports or in Europe, usually you can just take the tap water. So I just go to the bathroom, I fill up my water bottle again and I don't have to buy expensive water or expensive food in the airport. So that's it for this video. These were my tips on how to save money during a weekend trip or a vacation in Europe. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have more tips on how to save money during traveling, then let us know in the comments down below so that we can all benefit from it. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I will see you in my next video.